Hey, so I'm heading out to Long Island tomorrow to sit down with John Gotti III. If you're not familiar with John Gotti III, his grandfather was John Gotti Sr., who was the most notorious mobster probably in the world when I was growing up. So New Yorkers were terrified of him, and I'm terrified of insulting anybody who has the last name Gotti. To up the ante, I'm going to get John Gotti Jr. Seven of us are going together. All soldiers. They were all soldiers. John Gotti's son and John Gotti III's father involved. Let's see what we can get out of him before the big rematch with Floyd Mayweather on August 24th in Mexico City, only on DAZN pay-per-view. That was f***ing wild. All I said at that point was, oh, we messed up. And I was in the fight. I started getting my second win, and I felt like they robbed me of my best round. So I just, I went on emotion. We brought 530 people from New York with us to that fight. 60 were convicts. We're men. We have to take our lumps. We can't worry about our women in these situations, these volatile situations. So they have to stay home. He's gonna catch him and get him out of there early. No question about it. Okay. No question about it. I just watched the fight again. So it's June in Miami last year, yeah. right? I'm watching this thing and it turned into a show real quick. I think what people wanted to do right after they saw the fight and what they're going to do before they watch this next fight is try to attribute some sort of blame. What went wrong that night that caused an unprecedented stoppage, early stoppage of a exhibition fight for trash talking? I've never seen anything like that in my life and I've been watching boxing for arguably too long. What went wrong that night in Miami? Well, I think personally from the beginning, you know, your know, tensions were, were high to begin with with me and Floyd. Um, he had a lot of negative energy coming into the fight as did I. Um, he started the trash talking right away, you know, in the very beginning of the fight. And when I was on the defensive for the first four rounds, I was kind of taking it a little bit. And then as I started getting comfortable in the fight, I started delivering the trash talk back, you know. So from there, you know, it just got really out of hand. You know, I guess had I laid down and showed my belly and, and submitted to him, you know, they would have let him trash talk all night. Mm -hmm. The fact that I gave it back suddenly became a problem and uh, the referee warned us in the fifth round going into the sixth round. One warning though, you know, he didn't give us numerous warnings. Mm -hmm. We clinched up, we said a few words and he, he called the fight. So I was annoyed. I felt like I was getting comfortable in the fight at that point. Uh, and I was in the fight. I started getting my second wind and I felt like they robbed me of my best round. So I just, I went on emotion. Right, and it was an outrage, but it right. seemed like at the beginning of the fight, I'm watching the intros and the walk-ins. There was a friendly atmosphere. I think during the, uh, when the referee was giving their instructions, I believe Derek, I think you came over and you gave a pound to one of their traders. When Floyd had come in, you'd give him like a buddy oh, pound, yeah, like yeah. a little, called, so it seemed like there was some sort of Well, in the streets it's called rocking someone to sleep. Oh, okay. That's what Floyd did, he rocked me to sleep. He disarmed me, he, he, we, you know, we had an exchange, we hit each other, we smiled. Right. And then he came out and he, he took it to me early. He caught me completely off guard and that's my fault. I should have been ready for a fight right off the get-go like I said I was gonna be. So it won't happen again. There's gonna be no friendly exchanges this fight. You know, we're, we're gonna be after each other from the, the opening bell. I'm sure he's coming the same way and I'm coming prepared this time. You casually said he came after you early. Yeah. It was actually a statistical anomaly for him. I was just talking to your dad and he had all the numbers yeah. right with him from CompuBox. Floyd had never boxed that aggressive in a first round in his career as he did with you. As a guy who's traditionally, famously, iconically known to kind of fight on his back foot behind his shoulder, he came out guns a-blazing to the point where I thought the conditioning started to play in your favor. It right. seemed like this guy was starting to punch himself out. What do you think was his mindset with that? And do you think that's what you're gonna get when you fight him again on October 24th down in Mexico City? Well, he probably figured I was inexperienced in boxing. Mm -hmm. I, I was a little cold. I waited in the ring for about 15 minutes. That's or so. another thing. That's yeah. a f disgrace. Yeah. Like everybody knows, a boxer has to have a sweat on. Well, a boxer Floyd. has to have something. Floyd will make you wait. They, they, yeah, yeah, they chilled you out for 10 minutes right. beforehand. 
So he probably also figured I was a punk. I don't know. Maybe he thought I was going to lay down in a couple of punches. I don't know what film he watched. Never in any fight in MMA or boxing I ever laid down in any fight. So I don't know what his mindset was. I do know Floyd was determined this fight. I do know he was motivated. I'd never seen Floyd show up to a, an arena before any opponent. He was there 15 minutes before me, and I was early. Uh, I've never seen him have a selection of gloves like he had in his locker room. He was picking from Cleto Reyes gloves. Anybody knows about Cleto, those are puncher gloves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never seen Floyd have the output he had in any fight. So obviously he had a grudge to pick, and uh, he was determined to hurt me. Were you surprised with how much he didn't hurt you? No. I think he no. was. I think he was, I think he was visibly disappointed yeah. that he threw the kitchen sink at you. Right. And you didn't have a scratch on you for all intents and purposes. Right? right? I mean, right. there was more of a chance of you getting hurt after the melee broke out in the ring right. than during those eight rounds. You seemed to have eaten everything that he threw at you and was able to still come forward at times. You were never in any kind of trouble. Right. But knowing what you know about his power now, right? You're an experienced Floyd Mayweather boxer now. Right. What's different? What's the, is the slow start stuff out the window? Are we a size bully this time? What's going to be different well, this time? It's, it's about showing him no respect this time. You know, okay. I, was, I was very unsure of myself the last <laughs> him. You know, right. Yeah, <laughs> him. Yeah. You know, the, the moment was very big. It was, it was the first time I fought in front of 15,000 people. Yeah. And I'm fighting a guy who I looked up to as a kid. You know, he's one of my favorite fighters. So it was a surreal, you know, experience for me. And it took me a little time to get acclimated. You know, it's, it's a big stage, the big platform. And I wasn't trying to get knocked out and go viral, you know, to Floyd Mayweather. So yeah. I was very reserved. I was a little more in survival mode, which that's not how I fight. You know, I, I'm pretty aggressive. You know, when I let my hands go, I hit hard, I'm fast. And he'll see a different fighter this time. You know, I know what to expect. I've been in there with him six rounds. I felt his power. He does have power. He does punch hard but it's nothing I never felt before. And, and he's gonna get power back this time you know, in a big way. And now, because you're a soft-spoken guy right. whose only concentration is getting in there and kicking somebody's ass, is that a blessing to you? Or do you find that your dad is too controlling? I'm saying this because I'm going to ask your dad to come in right now and sit down with us right now. Like, how do you feel having your dad kind of take care of all that stuff? Is that a huge blessing? I know sometimes with boxing, having dads get in with uh, fighters sometimes can go the right way and sometimes can go the wrong way. How do you guys act as a team? By the way, it's very, very nice to sit down with both of you. I didn't know I was going to get a two for one, and it's mildly terrifying to me. But how do you guys work as a team, the Gotties? in making this thing a success in the ring and you making it a, su a success outside of the ring. John's a smart kid. Okay. He's, a, he's a deep thinker and he's a dweller. He dwells a lot, he thinks a lot, he replays things in his head continuously, like he's replayed this Mayweather fight over and over in his head. He knows exactly what he wants to do. So when I try to weigh in with a perspective, he'll stop me, he'll correct me and say, did I fight him or did you fight him? And I'll say, well, what do you mean? If you're fighting him, I am fighting him. Right. No, 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 no. But I physically went in the ring and fought him. Did you? No. Okay. Then let me do this. I got this. I know what I need to do. I watched his movements, Dad. I watched his feints. I watched the way he slide straddles. I watched everything that he's done. I've got to figure it out. I've watched it many times, and I've got this down to where I know what I want to do. So that's how he shuts me up. But we, we clash a lot. He takes care of his business in the ring. Uh, we try to give him the resources outside of that that can give John a good support platform to move forward. What are you going to do to keep him safe in Mexico? What, what, what are we going to do to keep it safe and get this thing to eight rounds? Unless you would knock him out quicker, right? I mean, your lips to God's ears. Yeah, yeah. Your lips to God's yeah. ears. So meaning you're basing it off of what happened in, in Florida? Yes. OK. Mexican law, this is what I was told, was that for every 25 fans, spectators at any venue, there has to be at least one security personnel. Really? So a venue of this magnitude, of this size, you're going to have to have 600 security personnel at this venue. So that certainly answered my security concerns. And again, if it's not my son fighting and it's going to be other relatives of ours in the audience, I don't care if they go to, we go to gladiator school. Right. I, really, I mean, I'm, I'd be concerned for the fans, for other people, for the pedestrians and the yeah. civilians. I'm going to call them civilians. But for ours, 
you know, we're street guys by heart. We don't really care about all of that. But when your family's at play here, I have a lot of concerns. So we're going to have this powwow. We're going to talk about, and they're going to readdress the security issues, explain to us what we're going to have all laid out. So we're going to have a visual of it all. The security passes that I spoke about, those access passes, uh, we're going to have those tamed and the control. They're getting 10, we're getting 10. If they're getting eight, we're getting eight. Right. That's it. But there's got to be a cap on it. We told them that. What happened in Miami, Florida cannot happen ever again. Which is good. I mean, yeah. obviously it's good because I think from the people who are promoting this, the people who are airing this, and certainly the people who are going to be buying this on the pay-per-view, we want to see how this thing plays out. How's mom feel about it? Is she? I mean, does she... Can she watch stuff or? No, she she, she watches all the fights. He's more nervous than my mother is. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, they're not allowed to attend. They're not allowed to come the to women, the fights. The they women are not allowed to attend in our family. They really? Can't, no, they yeah. take them to the venue. Okay. They, they all get together. They'll go to my daughter's <laughs> house or they'll stay at my that house. That is so old together. school Italian. Uh, the women aren't allowed to attend. Be, they'll get together. Because we're going to war. Yes. And as our corner will tell you, we, when we go down on the 14th, we're bringing the seven of us going for the first. That are, the, the landing force is going to be seven. Okay. All right, so you're getting there 10 days early on the 14th. Okay. Seven of us are going together, okay? All soldiers. They're all soldiers. Uh -huh. okay? John's corner and the soldiers that we bring with us. And then three days behind that, we have another 10 or 15 guys coming. And then on the 21st, we have about 50, 60 guys coming down. Uh -huh. So, And most of these guys, a lot of these guys are, are street guys, so to speak. For example, in, in Miami, Florida, of the 530 tickets we sold, we brought 530 people from New York with us to that fight. 60 were convicts. Okay. 60 were guys that were away with myself or my father, so they came to the fight. So they're serious guys. So the mentality that we employ here is that we, and I explain, you know, respectfully to my wife and to my daughter, is that there's no place for this. It, it's, it's more to be concerned about, there's more for us to worry about. We're men. We have to take our lumps. We have to take our, our scars on our heads. We, right. We can't worry about our women in these situations, these volatile situations. So they have to stay home. What's the trajectory for you after this fight? Well, I think Win this, or lose? This fight's going to be very telling. You know, I mean, how I look in this fight could uh, dictate my future. So, you know, we'll see. I'll, I take it one fight at a time. Okay. You know, that's the way I am. I know this going to be a very tough fight. Uh, I know there's a lot of bad blood. And I know man to man, we won't. Floyd wants to settle this, as do I. Man to man, forget all the boxing and all that other stuff. It's between me and him, it's personal. Do you hate him now? No. I okay. It, it, it's, it's not personal. In the ring, it's personal. Outside the ring, I, I wish him 100 years of health and happiness. You know, okay. that's the way I feel, but how would, I, down. How, yeah, how would I feel to knock him out? I feel great. Maybe the first fight, you know, but he's just an opponent now. He's just a face. And uh, if, he gets, if, if he comes in the way he came in the first fight, he's going to get caught. You know, he, he was very lax and lazy, and I couldn't make him capitalize because I was a little unsure of myself. But if he comes in, there's a lot of mistakes he made as well. He's going to get caught. So let's kind of sum up here. Let's kind of sum up. What had happened in June of last year was extremely unfortunate, I think, that we didn't get to see the way that this thing panned out. But as with everything else, we got to make some lemonade. And I think now, you saying that you like to get off to a slow start, done, you had your slow start in June, so you can kind of get right down to business on August 24th. And we have the security now in place where we can see this thing go all eight two-minute rounds, even though I don't agree with the two-minute rounds, so I'm still gonna say that till I die. And so we have and a we fight here. not all eight two-minute rounds. Yeah, because yeah. we don't get paid for we, we overtime. Hope, we hope John ends it quickly. Get him out of there uh, quickly. And I believe he has the ability to do that. Right. So that, so, yeah, so now, would you think so as a prediction, you think that your son has the opportunity to get Floyd Mayweather, a guy who traditionally does not get knocked out. Right. He's going to catch him and get him out of there early. No question about it. Okay. No question about it. Okay. I even offered to match them. Whatever he's got coming to him, put it in a pool, match the pool, let's go. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No question about it. Does that change the way that you're going to fight? No question about it. I mean, does it change the way that... Like, there are some people who say, I don't let this thing... Traditionally, I don't want to let this thing go to the cards. I don't want to let this thing go into deep water. I don't want to think. Is this one of those things where you want to get him out of there early? I know every fighter's, yeah, I want to get him out of there early. But can you size bully him, get out there and f maybe throw a couple of counter punches to the way he was overly aggressive in that first fight? Like, what are we thinking? What are we, what are we seeing from you when that bell rings on August 24th? If the opportunity presents itself and, and he gets lazy, he will get caught and he could get knocked out. Anybody can get knocked out. You know, this is, this is boxing, but I'm a realist. Uh, and me and my father clash on this, and he's my biggest fan and advocate, and I, and I appreciate his confidence in me. Right. 
I believe it's going to be a war. That's what I believe. I believe for eight rounds, we're going to go back and forth, and we're going to punish each other. That's what I believe. And if I believe if somebody gets lazy, someone's going to get knocked out. Listen, you're going up against one of the greatest fighters of this era. Who's ever lived? He's beat 20 world champions or 20 plus world champions. Right. The level of expertise and IQ he has in that ring, I felt it when I was in there the first time. But what I'm trying to say now is I've been in there with him. So yeah. I, the advantage yeah. I have is I've seen what he has. And I'm one of those people where it's sparring or a fight. If a sparring partner comes in and gets the better of me the first week, the second week I do better. Because now I know what to expect. Right. So I know what to expect. Okay, and then now it's set up. So now we're heading down to Mexico City. The Gotti's are about to invade Mexico City. I like thinking about that in my head. Mayweather's are about to invade Mexico City as well. We got a fight on our hands. August 24th, the zone pay-per-view. John Gotti the third versus Floyd Mayweather. Best of luck to you, my man. Thank it was you. An Appreciate absolute it. Pleasure talking to you. It was a pleasure talking to you.